Hello, this is Parm King, and I'm super excited to bring to you another Curse of Stride guide. This time, it is the Tesser Pool and the Bastani Camp, Madame Ava's famous card reading. And you can probably hear in the background, there's some music playing. I've created a song list, a playlist on Spotify of traditional Romani and Russian folk music, and I'll provide a link to that down below. In addition, this entire map pack for Foundry is available for free. Yes, I've created a map pack that includes the Vistani camp and a card reading table for free. And for my Patreon members, this entire guide is available in PDF for you. And for my Foundry Adventure Pack members, this entire map, including the additional actors, content, playlist, rule tables, and my detailed GM notes is available in a Foundry Adventure Pack. So let's just jump in. We're going to start right away looking at this beautiful animated map by James RPG Art. I'll put a link down below. I really like these for theater of the mind maps. If I was playing on a tabletop, I'd have a big screen TV with this going. kind of really sets the atmosphere. And when I use this in Foundry, I use these as theater of the mind maps. I can drag my tokens in here. We can role play from this map. It's just really awesome. So let's jump right into this guide here. Before we get started, I want to do a special acknowledgement to both DM Andy for being gracious enough to include two of his maps here. I'll be demonstrating those and showing those in Foundry. And also to Mandy Mod. Mandy Mod and Dragon Card are probably the two most well-known modders uh, for Curse of Strahd. I'm including some of the stuff from Mandy Mod's uh, Tesser Pool, Fleshing Out Curse of Strahd. There's a link also back to her really detailed um, uh, content on Reddit. So highly recommend reading that. So thank you very much. And also special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Uh, it's your support that allows me to continue to put out some great content, including the Foundry Map Packs, Foundry Adventure Packs, and these PDF guides. So thank you so much, everyone. Now, let's move on here, and we're going to go jump right in through this guide and talk a little bit about the Vistani. I think it's kind of important that we understand the context of the Vistani. Now, the Vistani were first introduced back in the 1980s in the original Ravenloft i6 module, and what I don't think Curse of Strahd really did is differentiate between the Vistani. It mentions the Vistani are kind of in league with Strahd, um, and I think it leaves it a little vague. So what I did in this guide is I divided this Vistani into two groups. There's a Vistani group. The first one you're going to meet is in the Tesser Pools. That's where Madam Ava is going to do her card reading. I call this the Tesser Pool Vistani. The other group is in Velaki, um, which you're going to, uh, they have a camp just outside Velaki. Now, if the players uh, are successful with their perception check or an insight check, keep it kind of low DC 10, they're going to notice all the Vistani uh, in the Tessa pool are wearing bandanas or scarves, either on their head or around their neck or on their arm, and they're all the same color. They're a blue color with a pattern on them. And once they get to Velaki, they'll notice that all the Vistani there are wearing red bandanas or red scarves around their arms or necks or wearing them on their head. And this just differentiates the two Vistani groups or Vistani clans, perhaps. And it's the red scarves or the Velaki Vistani that are in league with Strahd. They're the spies for Strahd and the blue ones are neutral. They don't really have any position in here. Now, secretly, the Vistani and the Tessa Pools would like to see Strahd removed, but they will never openly admit to that. So I put that little difference in here, and I think it's really good that we do that because we can play them off each other. What's also important about those bandanas, those colored bandanas, as your playing players are traveling through Barovia and you happen to run into any Vistani on a road or in a town or somewhere, if they're wearing one of the two colored uh, bandanas and the players have figured out that difference uh, and succeeded in their perception or insight check, then they'll be able to know, is this a Strad Vistani spy or is this one of the good Vistanis from the Tesser pools? Now we're going to jump in here. I've extracted some of the stuff from Mandy Mod's really great uh, background and lore. I think it's really good to put this in there. It gives you an idea as the Dungeon Master on how you want to role play these Vistanis. Some great stuff on beliefs and travelers. I also put a link back in here to uh, Mandy Mod's Fleshing Out Curse of Strahd, the Tesser Pools. It's a great, great read. Now this is again, this is this great picture from uh, James RPG Art. There's a link in here to his Patreon. I highly recommend that. Now the Vistani have 
curses. And I flesh this out a little bit more than what's in Curse of Strahd. And I look at it as there's three levels of curses. There's kind of the annoyance curse, the cruel curse, and the vindictive. And really the curse that the Vistani will curse you with is based on how much of a slight or annoyance or off offense that you've made. Now, I see the tester pull Vistani as being more friendly, jovial, uh, the more friendly banter, and they're not quick to temper. Whereas the Valaki Vistani are quick to temper, very quick, and they will certainly curse you without a second moment's notice. Now, there's three levels of the curses. I actually named them the, the annoyance curses. This is the fumble. This is where the target can't perform simple tasks. Uh, it'll screw up their semantic spell casting. There's the hideous where you're going to have some kind of deformity. I also put in there that you'll roll disadvantage on persuasion checks. And then there's the loss. A non-magical item will be lost until the curse ends. Now, when a Vistani curse you, you're going to have to uh, uh, roll a wisdom saving throw. We, uh, the DC check is 8 plus Vistani's proficiency plus their charisma in order for that curse to succeed. Now some important things to keep in mind about the curse. The only way to remove the curse is with, with remove curse spell, greater restoration spell, or some similar magic spell. Or the Vistani that uh, perform the curse on you can remove it. Now they'll have to be persuaded to remove the curse from you in some way and you can role play that out. However, killing that Vistani that cursed you will not end the curse. And if you die and you're cursed, when you are resurrected, you will still have the curse. So the only way to remove it is through those three spells or having the Vistani who cursed you remove it. Another Vistani cannot move another Vistani's curse. It's really that Vistani who's cursed you is the only one that can remove it. Something to keep in mind. Now, the cruel curses are exposed. That means the target's gonna be vulnerable to a particular damage the Vistani determines. And stifle, the target has disadvantage to all ability checks and saving throws on one particular ability score of the Vistani's choice. Now, the Vistani, when they have a curse on you and the curse ends, they're gonna take psychic damage when the curse ends. So on the annoyance level ones, they're only gonna take 1d6 damage, but on these cruel ones, it's gonna be 3d6 damage. Now, the higher level uh, curses are dead magic, which means they're gonna target uh, a magic item that you're attuned to, and they're gonna select it, and you're no longer, it's no longer gonna be attuned to. You're, it's technically a useless item at this point. I mean, other than its core function, it loses all its magical ability. You will not be able to attune to this magic item again until the curse ends. The other one is strike blind and deaf. So these are very vindictive curses. If the Vistani, if the curse ends, they'll take 5d6 worth of damage. So those are the three level curses. Obviously, if you're going to be playing Vistani from the Velaki area, they're quick tempered. They'll curse, no problem, no, no questions asked. The ones in the tester pool, remember they're neutral, they're gonna be more friendly, um, friendly banter. It, you're gonna really have to do something to cause offense for them to, to curse you, and most likely they're gonna be an annoyance curse. So let's move on there, take out the map here and talk about the encampment here. Again, here's the picture of this beautiful map by DM Andy, and at the end of the video, we're gonna jump into Foundry, I'm gonna show you some of the things I did in Foundry. Uh, in the, both the free map pack and also the Foundry Adventure pack for the Patreon members. There's a couple of people in here. There's a new NPC. So we have Madam Ava. Uh, we have three Vistani leaders. They're going to be roaming around this camp somewhere, uh, totally sober, kind of on alert. There's going to be 12 Vistani men and women, and I would divide them between the two campfires. I would have maybe two or three scattered inside the tent sleeping and the rest of them around the campfires. And then you have the eight draft horses. Now there's a new uh, character in here named Petra. Um, his stat block is a veteran. He has a multi-attack, one with a cane, rapier, and a dagger. Um, that's pretty much it. And we're gonna learn about Petra right now. Now Petra is a new NPC I added. I think it's gonna be really fun. I think you're gonna really love him in your campaign. Petra is a Vistani. He doesn't wear a scarf. He travels all over Barovia and he's kind of a traveling merchant. In his wagon, he carries adventuring gear to buy and sell. And in addition to that, he has a random magic item. So I've created a random magic item table. You can create your own. I would keep the magic item under 
5,000 GP, keep it within uh, something that fits within the, the narrative of the game. If it was going to be any plus uh, weapons or, or um, armor, I'd just keep it plus one. Don't make it overpowering. But when uh, Petra has it, he it has a story. He wants to tell it. He found it or traded for it. He's very excited. Petra is a jolly, friendly folk, has many stories to share and tell. Now, you're going to first encounter Petra in Tesser Pools, and the players will encounter him in the Velaki camp um, as well, and possibly on the road. Anybody of significance in Barovia knows who Petra is. He travels between Kresk, Velaki, the village of Barovia. Uh, he goes between the two Vistani camps. He's a traveling merchant, a traveling trader. He knows some stories. He's friendly, jovial. Um, nobody finds offense with him. Everybody kind of likes him and tolerates his kind of jovial demeanor. Now, when you do purchase something from Petra, at the end of the transaction, Petra has some secrets that he will tell you. He's only going to tell you one, one secret uh, at the end of a transaction. And I have a couple of them listed here. You can add your own to it. For instance, uh, the herbalist on the outskirts of Vlaki has some of the best herbs and remedies in Vol Barovia. Uh, the Vistani and Vlaki camp tend to have a more favorable relationship with Strahd. You know, there's a strange st stone circle that lies just west of the windmill in the forest. So these are kind of clues uh, to locations and about NPCs that you, they're, you know, you're playing some suggestions with your players. And they just you want to fit that in a little bit into the narrative. Now you can turn this into a roll table and have them randomly select one of these things if you like. It's really up to you. Now Petra does offer a single quest. Petra is looking for a bottle of the Champagne de la Stamp. If you can bring him a bottle of that, it was produced in the Wizards of Wine. He will offer you 500 GP in trade value for any item or items that he has that he's selling with them. Remember, he's selling adventure items, smaller weapons, anything below 100 gold, plus one random magic item that you're going to select every time he visits. I would always have that magic item constantly rotating a new one. Uh, item in there and if the players don't have the money and they want to buy it he can hold hold it for them until they find something but having kind of a, a random magic item with a fun story that Petra can tell them about encouraging them to buy it maybe it's a magic item a random one or maybe a magic item that you think your players may need or want in order to complete a particular quest or their main quest dealing with Strahd so his his wagon's going to be traveling throughout uh, Barovia so there he is there really fun uh, NPC. On the map, by the way, um, this is Petra's wagon right up here. Uh, he'll be hanging around there. And I also made in Foundry uh, a vehicle. So if you're going to put it on another map, you're going to have Petra's wagon to put on another map. Let's go on to the last one here is Madam Ava. And I've changed her backstory in my campaign. Madam Ava is actually the mountain fate hiding among the Vistani. She is seeking brave adventures to change the course of history and defeat Strahd and to restore the Fae. So this is part of the Mandy Mod Dragon Carta Fae quest. And she is the mountain fate. Now, she will never ever reveal the fact that she's the Mountain Fae under any conditions to anyone because she she's afraid that her secret gets out to Strahd, she's going to be in big trouble. So no matter how much she trusts the players, she will not tell the players, right? Because what if the players get captured? What if the players do not succeed? It's just not worth the risk. Now she is going to steer them a little bit in their reading to kind of defeat Strahd. She's going to sound maybe that she's neutral to slightly anti strahd but she's not going to reveal too much of her disposition. She's also, if you ask her about the fake quest, she's going to just not tell you anything. She's like, oh, some silly fairies, it's an old myth, etc. She will reveal that she knows about three stone circles, one behind the windmill, one in the swamps of Baraz, and one in Yester Hill. But beyond that, she's very aloof about it. She does not want to bring any attention to herself. So remember, She's one of the Fae's that centuries ago, during the battle with Lord Strahd, she's gone into hiding. So she's been hiding for, you know, a, several generations, couple of centuries here, among the Vistani, um, 
you know, trying to find adventurers to defeat Strahd. So that is her big secret. And when you restore the Fae, it's going to be a huge reveal, a huge surprise to the players when this, when the Mountain Fae is restored, and all of a sudden you see this young, uh, elegant, uh, beautiful Fae that resembles Madame Ava. And she'll reveal that she was Madame Ava in hiding and couldn't take the risk of revealing herself to the player. So. I really like this. Again, this is, pays tribute back to uh, Dragon Carta and Mandy Mod, um, the little twist on their their um, Fey quest. Now, the card reading, you can do the card reading in Curse of Strahd. There's a link back to Curse of Strahd. Alternatively, I put a really big detailed guide on Taroka deck reading, including some of the mechanics from 2E and 3E, some different methods, including my Stone Cold method. I've also included, um, for my Patreon members, all the cards from the very highly collected Ravenloft deck, the 3E deck, so all of those are available in digital f format. In addition, there's a link here to the Curse of Strahd uh, to Roka deck. So let's go ahead and jump over into Foundry really quickly here. And here we are in Foundry. Now I've got this um, beautiful animated map by James RPG. I highly recommend going over there and picking up his animated maps for your theater of the mind. I mean, they're just, they, my players love them. You're right, it brings you right in the mood and the atmosphere, and he's just done a really good job of it. So let's jump over to DM Andy's Tester Pool Encampment map. And the one thing I really love about DM Andy's map is, especially if you're using it, these in Foundry, is he's made them exterior and interior at the same time. So your players can be exterior and then because he's removed the top of the, the tents, we have these interior elements as well. So we only need to use one map. Now, uh, DM Andy's put a lot of different of these maps together. He has ones with rains, one with grids, one with the coverings on them. If you want to use them for your role-playing game or Roll20, you can head on over there and download them. He's been gracious enough to allow us to use his map in our free Foundry map pack as well as our free uh, sorry, as well as our Foundry Adventure Pack for our Patreon members. So let's take a closer look at this map. I've done all the lighting and walls in it, so you don't have to do anything. I put some candle lighting. I'll zoom in here. You can see the candle lighting. Uh, you can see the little, um, I'll zoom way in there. You can see the, the uh, kind of the cauldron or the, 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 the um, I guess you would call this maybe a crystal ball with some red smoke in it, the cauldron. He's just such great de detail that I just really love his maps. Here's the, the cooking tent. You can see I got some candles in there flickering inside the tent. Uh, here's some of the wagons, the fire pit, frying up some food. Uh, they got some musical instruments there. Um, this is Petra. There he is right there. And you can see, by the way, here's the fog of war. So if I move around the map, you can see how we did the fog of war here. I make it so they can pe peek into the map when they they go around the map. Um, just so you know, I'm using the mask walls here so that you can get a little light peeking in there. I thought it was kind of cool. Like the, the, the tent's kind of half open. You can see the candles lit. Um, so all the fog of war, all the wall walls are done. Um, there's a couple more maps over here. You can see with some lighting in it. Just a really gorgeous map. Um, and you can go ahead and drag and drop. I've included all the actors in here. So Petra's in here, Madam Ava. Uh, his wagon, the Vistani. You can just drag in the Vistani over here, put them around the fire. There, there you go. There's some Vistani. Put up how you how you want to design your map um, for your encounter here. Now, once you jump into your um, a card reading, there's a card reading table map. Um, this again is by DM Andy. It's available in the free map pack as well as well as the Foundry Adventure Pack. Um, one of the things that I also included. Uh, for my Foundry Adventure Pack members is the entire um, deck here of the uh, Ravenloft, highly collected Ravenloft deck, which are just gorgeous. And you can just drag them right on here, drop them in here, zoom in and see these, these really nice cards uh, in here. So I, I just really love these cards. I think these just look, they look amazing. And what's nice is you can just um, drag them and put them in here and do your card reading. Uh, I, if you click on them, they have all their detailed information about reading the card. Um, and that's all in there for the, the Foundry members. A couple other things that I put in the Foundry Adventure Pack as well is I have the roll tables for Petra's ma magic item. You can just roll on here. It'll determine what magic item will be Petra will have. Here it's a Wand of Secrets. You can click on it. 
all the items are already loaded in there. And I also have the detailed, everything you saw in the PDF guide is available also in Foundry. So everything that you saw in the PDF guide, including all the curses, links back to D&D &D Beyond, are all here uh, in this guide. And last but not least, I put in the Vistani lore. So if, the, if you're gonna talk to one of the Vistani around the campfire, you can just roll this and the Vistani will randomly share some of the lore here. Uh, Strahd conquered this land centuries ago and named it after his father, King Barov. Strahd uses wolves, bats, and other creatures to spy on all the realms. So all the Vistani random roll tables in here, as well as Petra's secret tables, the one that I just put together for you. So if Petra's gonna tell a player a secret, not all Vistani are happy with the balance of power in Barovia. So all of that's done in the Foundry uh, Adventure Pack for my Patreon members. These, uh, there's a free map pack for everybody out there and as well as the PDF guide. Thank you so much. Please make sure you click like and subscribe if you did like this video, if you found it helpful or if you do like my guides. And if you want to subscribe to my Patreon and help me out so I can produce more content like this for you, please do, there'll be a link down below. Until next time, this is Parm King signing off and may all your roles be critically successful.